This interview of another one of the CARB 2014 inductees, and that would be Ken Williams. And I'm here with Ken's brother, Tiger Bob Williams, who we all remember from racing just about in that same era. I guess you could say, Bob, that uh, where you guys lived at, you could hear the cars running down at Olympic Stadium, and that kind of got you guys' blood going just a little. Yeah, on every Sunday night, there'd be either midgets or Super modifies running down there, and it uh, it got your attention because that made a lot of noise. And yeah. and uh, Kenny went down there and looked through the fence, and he got interested in it. And mm -hmm. that's uh, that's how we both got started in racing. Of course, he got started before me, and uh -huh. and then uh, I, I was uh, got as as well interested in it. I understand. At first, you guys climbed up in a tree, and we're watching from a tree. And then after that, uh, dug a hole under the fence in the north north end, I think? Uh, I wasn't going down there with him. I was too little. But when he was young, uh, he they said he watched the races through a hole in the fence. I, uh -huh. I can't imagine uh, watching through the slats of a fence, but maybe that's what happened. Yeah. And then later on, the track owners kind of found out what was going on and sealed it up. But anyway, still an interesting way to get your interest, just leave, living in the neighborhood. I'm somewhat familiar with that. I live in North Kansas City, and we could hear the, the cars at Riverside. Oh, yeah. It just plain as day. You knew yeah. there was races going on. Let's put it that way. But uh, anyway, interesting way to get involved. In 1956, though, Ken gets his first car, and then he buys a 37 Ford Coupe. And it is, if, correct me if I'm wrong here, now he's, it's owned by Spencer, is that Tolner? No, he kept it down at Spencer Tolner. He bought oh. it himself. Uh, he bought it, uh, somebody kind of uh, sold him a duck in the pond because uh, <laughs> everybody was going to chop jobs back then, and this was a full body 37 Ford coupe with uh, mechanical brakes on it. You couldn't stop it in a country mile. <laughs> Nevertheless, race with yeah. it. Anyway, he learned the hard way. The guy uh, sold him a car and even painted it and uh, lettered it and everything. Yeah. I thought, boy, that's a good deal. All I got to do is uh, hook it on the back of my 54 Lincoln and take it to the racetrack and go racing. Well, he found out the hard way that the car wasn't competitive, but he was a hard driver and yeah. and that kind of showed some of the other people that he could drive. Uh -huh. And that's that's when he started driving for Spencer Tolner. Okay, and if my understanding is that Tolner had four or five old Plymouths. Yeah, uh, and, and he chopped them all up and they and they made jalopies out of them. Uh, did, was this just to increase car count or <laughs> do you have any idea how, how he ended up with four or five race cars? Uh, the Spencer, he was a character of, <laughs> I don't know, it seemed like every night they were building a new car. <laughs> that, it, it was, uh, they were cheap and uh, we run more or less stock motors, but they, he did lighten them up real good and mm -hmm. chop them down. It didn't take your brother Ken very long to move along in the ranks, and by 1959 and 60, he's uh, driving for Bob Bonds at Olympic Shawnee, and he's in a super modified. It, it, like you say, he he got the attention of car owners pretty quick, evidently. Yeah, he was he was just a natural driver. He everything he got in, he he made it go faster than anybody else that was ever in it. Uh, do you know? Any specifics about the super modified that he was in? I mean, who built it? I mean, did did Bonds build it? Or yeah, was it? it was Bob Bonds. Uh, he was I uh, uh, can't remember out there in Kansas somewhere. Yeah, uh, not too far out, Bonner Springs. Okay. Anyway, and he he built a car, and uh, later on his uh, son drove uh, James Bond. And a double James o Bond. Do I remember that Double O well, Seven. That was, that yeah. was uh, his son. Yeah, I'll be darned. I did not know fact, that. Matter of fact, I think James built a trailer for us. That my dad, he ended up by having a car, and mm -hmm. James Bond built us a trailer for it. I'll be darned. In '63, he's still doing super modifieds. Of course, once you get up to that class, you don't usually don't go back any further. So, but he's driving for Bill Ryan, and he's racing at the Topeka Fairgrounds, Knoxville, and Olympic. Boy, three nights a week they. They had to have been pretty pretty busy on this. Uh-huh. Actually, he was driving for Roy Still. 
uh, Friday nights at the uh, oh, okay. at the fairgrounds in Topeka because Roy did, he didn't want to travel he just wanted to run one night a week at uh -huh. home and uh, Kenny wanted to go to Knoxville and run Olympic and that's worked out good for Bill Ryan because Bill Ryan is a truck driver and he didn't get home normally until Friday afternoon or so so uh -huh. he, he could race Saturday and Sunday no problem but uh, didn't uh, had a hard time making it to peak on yeah. Friday. I'm still somewhat amazed about being able to run like three week three days on the weekend. You know, we don't have that around here much anymore. It's it's pretty much most drivers will run at one track. Some will run at two, but uh, those guys had to have had a lot of strength and energy. I guess is the only thing I can say because it that takes quite a bit. I mean, you you drove. Didn't it take quite a bit out of you for a night of driving? Oh, I usually woke up about Wednesday. I was so <laughs> tired after Sunday. I, uh, yeah, just had to be a glutton for punishment, I guess. Yeah, because, boy, there was a bunch of them that got up and did it. They didn't seem yeah. to. Well, like at Olympic Stadium, they'd have 50 cars down wow. there on a Sunday night. And you had to go pretty fast to even make the A feature. And, uh -huh. and I don't know how many times... Uh, Kenny went down there and drove a car that always ran the B, and they asked him to drive, and, and he could put, he'd put it in the A feature and yeah. run up towards the front end, and it was strictly a B class car. Uh -huh. It was just a natural. Just a natural. I heard it kind of smooth. Oh, yeah. Um, in 65, he gets his first points championship, and that's at the, at the Topeka Fairgrounds, and he's in a race stills, if I'm pronouncing that right, Styles. Roy Stills. Roy Stills. Roy Stills car. Yeah. Uh, do you remember anything in particular about that 65 season? That Well, uh, that's kind of funny. Used to, back then, you qualified for the Knoxville Nationals on Friday night, and then you run the Nationals Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Well, Kenny was leading the points down there in, in uh, Topeka in the Roy Stills car, and I told him that I'd, I would qualify uh, Bill Ryan's car at the Knoxville Nationals on Friday night. Well, uh, as luck has it, I uh, drawed like number three for mm -hmm. uh, Bill oh. Ryan's car, which Kenny was supposed to be driving. I drove it under his name. Uh -huh. And uh, so I went out and I set fast time. And uh, in the car that I was driving for Dick Miller, uh, we drawed like 260. <laughs> so by the time we went out, the racetrack was completely gone, and and I qualified about halfway back in the B. Well, rumors started going around that the Kenny what, didn't qualify the car that I qualified oh, it. Oh boy! And so uh, some of the guys were sniveling pretty hard, and uh, uh, Marion Robinson called Topeka and told him Ken Williams was sitting on the pole at the 65 yeah. Knoxville Nationals and the, the paper down there in the sporting uh, section said boy he, he must be real fast because he just won the feature here tonight <laughs> <laughs> and so over the PA system they were saying Bob Williams and Ken Williams come to the judges stand uh -huh. and of course I, we jumped in uh, my dad's car and we ran out to the airport because Kenny was flying up uh -huh. so Kenny flew up and uh, we went up to the judges stand and they said, you wasn't here tonight, was it? Yeah, I was here, I drove it. <laughs> I said, no, you wasn't. Because we know you won the feature in uh, yeah. Topeka on th that night. And so uh, I had to drive the, the car, it started on the pole at, in the Bill Ryan's car. Yeah. And Kenny didn't get to race that, that, uh, that night. Quite a story, that's, yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. Two places at one time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that Ken Williams, he is fast. He won the feature down here and had fast time at Knoxville. Now. <laughs> in 66, there again, it's another good year, evidently, because he repeats as the points champion at uh -huh. Topeka. I'm sure he's running at other tracks like he had been before that. But was there, was it a favorite track of his? Did he have a certain feel for that? It seems like he really did well. Well, uh, that uh, Roy still had a. 427 uh, oh. uh, Plymouth motor and, and it is had, had tremendous horsepower and and that Topeka Fairgrounds was just two long straightaways boy and mm -hmm. Kenny could really get a lot of speed going down the yeah. straightaway and and uh, 
the guy had the car set up for the track, and, and he thought, why, why change the setup to run anywhere else? Yeah. And and he liked Kenny, and Kenny never tore the car up. So uh -huh. that's the way it went. Winning combination. You, yeah. You can't beat that. I mean, that. let's face it, in this sport, that that's a big part of it, is having the right equipment and the right driver. If you can put them together, sometimes magic happens. Yeah. And it seems like Kenny had it, especially up there at Topeka. Uh-huh. In 67, Kenny wins the short track championship at Olympic Stadium with the best in short track racing at that time there. I mean, there I'm thinking on one of the bios, it was like 10 states or something that was represented, uh -huh. and cars and drivers, you know, that, that are really names in the sport. I thought it was 67, but it was actually 68. 68 is yeah. when he wins, okay. Yeah. He was driving for Kenny Stolfus. Uh -huh. A friend of ours uh, has had cars for years. I was going to say, if I remember right, I think that was one of the buddies that supposedly was sneaking in with Kenny in the, no. at the beginning of the story or something. No, no. It, uh, Later on? He, he didn't meet Kenny Stolfus until uh, he got in the electrician's local. Oh, club, okay. And Kenny was an apprentice. Okay. You know, under my brother. Yeah. Uh, can you recall very much about that short track championship? I mean, are there any thoughts you have on it? Like you say, man, with all those drivers and, and uh, everybody yeah. there, it, it had to be a big deal for him to win that. Yeah, it was. I, I don't remember what I was driving, but I I didn't see him. I think I ran third or fourth. Yeah. I might have been driving for Pappy. Or, yeah. I think it was because I don't think I'd start driving for Cunningham yet yeah. in 68. Not the... Yeah. Not till later. He was so fast you don't remember seeing him. No. <laughs> he took the lead and held it. And I yeah. probably started in the back and held uh, my position. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, what is it? He started also that year, uh, I believe it was 15th, he started in uh, Knoxville and ended up 6th. So there again, must have been having a pretty good year, pretty successful uh -huh. season. In 68, he does improve on his qualifying at Knoxville. And uh, he starts third, but ends up crashing out of the race. That had to be disappointing for him, I'm sure, because it sounds like he might have had a car that could have went all the way. Yeah, he was uh, lapping uh, Hank Smith, and uh, somebody went by Hank Smith on the bottom, and he, Kenny was going to go by him on the outside. And and when Hank Smith went in the corner, that guy shot underneath him. He pulled out, and moved Vincent or Robbie. Excuse me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Kenny was right there. And, and he ran over his right rear and he put it clear up on the wall and there's a picture of him up about 30 feet on the wall just sitting there like yeah. this. He just went up and it just, yeah. I'll never forget that picture. Yeah, I'll be darned. <laughs> Came down, of course, it tore the front end, rear end out of everything, but he never turned it over. But yeah. the way he crashed it hard. Yeah, that's what it says. He didn't get hurt, but yeah. the car was toast after that. Yeah. It wasn't going to be coming back for any more runs. Uh -uh. You know, 69. Uh, He's driving for a Joe Booth, and this is probably, uh, well, he's been driving also at this time, he'd been driving at Olympic and at the fairgrounds, but uh, I'm sure that's a year that's going to be burned, you know, within your heart and your mind, and one of those things that just so hard to take, but uh, Kenny loses his life in an accident at a race there at the Pika Fairgrounds in 69. Once again, like I say, tremendous career, but just way before the time that he should have gone. It would have been interesting to see what he could have done after that. Yeah, uh, that's June 20th, uh, Friday night, uh, 1969. What what was kind of sad about the whole deal was that he, had, like you said, all this running three nights a week, he was getting kind of burnt out on it, and he was actually getting interested in flying. Right. He was taking pilot's license, and he told me, he said, I'd, Bobby, I think this is going to be my last year. I, I just burn out, and I, I'm ready to start flying. I'm yeah. really he really enjoyed flying. Right. So that's uh, sounded like the family was getting a little bit older and, and whatever, and he yeah. wanted to spend more time with them because uh -huh. boy, it, it seems like when they're young, it's just taken care of. But when they get older, why they develop personalities and stuff, and you know you want to spend more time with them. I'm sure like he did, but like I say, tragic accident for Ken and to lose him so young. Yeah. I understand Ken wanted to be an actor, but thought he'd just give racing a try. <laughs> well, he was in all the schools, uh, plays and musicals, and uh, he was just a natural at, at anything he did, driving race cars or acting or singing. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, 
just was so easy for him uh, that that he thought, well, I could be a, an actor. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, uh, some of the guys called him Hollywood Ken. Yeah. And he, I don't think he cared that much. For <laughs> I thought Mr. Ken was what they yeah. put on his car. Uh, that's what his, uh, his brother-in-law put on there. Bob Chambers put Mr. Ken on it. <laughs> <laughs> Heard he was a little bit of a perfectionist too. Did this? Do you think it's played any into the success that he had? I mean, I mean, let's face it. Race cars are an intricate piece of machinery, and man, you've got to really have everything just so-so and the setup's right and did he play a lot into that is did that pretty much go with the car owner doing that well uh, that was a combination of of him and the car owner and and his ability is yeah. his ability like I said he could take a car that couldn't run that fast and make it run even faster yeah so he, he had a lot of natural ability and he knew what to do to it if the car was doing one thing or another right. he, he knew, well, we need to put more caster in it, we need to put yeah. more lead in it, we need to take some stagger out, or we need to put yeah. some stagger in, or we need to let some air out of the tires. Or, and they started running wings in, and we started, they started, well, got the wing too far back, we got the uh -huh. wing too far forward, we got the wing up too high. Uh, you just, you learn those things, but when you can usually go out in hot laps, of course, the racetrack's never the same never the in the hot laps as it is in the future, but it gives you an idea of what what you think you're going to have to do to it when the track slickens up. And the right, just not make any major changes. Just go out with your setup and see what happens. Yeah. yeah. A local driver that I was talking to when found out I was going to be doing this interview kind of compared you and Ken together, and he his comparison was is Ken was really smooth. The Tiger Bob would throw it in there and let her go. <laughs> Is that excuse excuse me? Pretty much the way you would describe your you guys' driving styles. Well, uh, I just tried to learn how to drive because uh, Pappy Weldon and I just did not. If he thought the car was pushing, he would put more right front weight in it, which would even make it push worse. So. I, I learned that rather than go in and tell him it's pushing uh -huh. and him put more right front weight in to stick the right front, I would just sling the car around and not uh -huh. not, <laughs> not complain to him about anything yeah. because we, he, him and Jerry and uh, Junior Hire and a lot of them, they talked about, you know, you know, when it's pushing, you need to put more right front weight in it. Well, yeah. that, that's not, that makes it even push worse. So. Yeah. <laughs> But I, like you said, I think he pretty much described Ken's driving style already. He was just smooth and he could take inferior equipment, if that's the right word to use, yeah. and, and, and make a better race car out of it just with his, his abilities. Well, Bob, all I can say is congratulations to you and Ken's family. I know uh, you guys really, uh, I'm sure, appreciate it with Ken being inducted into the Carb Hall of Fame. Yeah, I'm, uh, I actually thought he was already in because... Uh, Charlie and Virginia Nelson, or uh -huh. Charlie, was that their name? I think so, yeah. Anyway, they almost lived at the Kenny's house and Mel's house every weekend. I thought, well, he'll be the first one in. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe, they didn't, like my wife said, maybe they didn't have a Hall of Fame back then. But yeah. I know uh, in 1969, I got a car of a Hall of Fame driver, a Ken Williams Memorial uh, uh -huh. trophy. So I, I just figured he was already in the Hall yeah. of Fame. but. Yeah. Like I said, maybe they didn't have a Hall of Fame back then. Yeah, but still a great honor. Short career, but still one of the best for his era. So, yeah. like I say again, Bob, congratulations well, on thank champion. You. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Hope this has been uh, maybe uh, news telling to somebody that wasn't around 45 years ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's hard to believe it's been 45 years this June 20th. Which It'll be here for you know. Yeah. Like my dad say, the days crawl by and the years fly by. <laughs> true. That's true. Yeah. Thanks again, Bob. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for all the work you mm -hmm. guys are doing at Car. But uh, it's an awful lot of work you and Carla Lane and and the lady from uh, Karen Darling. Carolyn Darling, you got, you guys do a lot of work and you. Yeah. You deserve a lot of credit. They do it in a short time too. Yeah. I might add that because yeah. uh, I think the nominations. And and the people that they pick only comes out in uh, I'm going to say January, 
and uh, you've only got from January to March, which is five weeks or so, to, to get it all done. And uh, I'm, I'm with you. Congre uh, thank you a lot, Karen Darling and Carl Lane. Hell of a job. Yeah. Thanks again. We're good. Thank you.